everybody, it's Fairwind Cosplay with Aurelian Cosplay. And we are here with a recap of Katsukon! Katsukon. We didn't plan that. that <laughs> no, <good>. we did not. <laughs> so we just got back from Katsukon 2019 and it was quite an adventure. We went with uh, three of our friends who have never been to Katsukon before and one of whom who had never been to a convention before. So traveling with them was a really eye-opening experience that ended up, for the most part, being a totally fun, crazy weekend. Yeah. So we traveled down with three of our friends. We went with the Ben Co, we went with the Citrus Witch, and Active Whimsy Cosplay. And we got there Thursday night after some delays in Jersey. Thank you, Jersey. And checked in and did a little bit of cosplay photography at night. We met up with at least 35 people Thursday night alone and realized that, one, we know an awful lot of people and two, pretty much everybody from Long Island was at Katsukon. Oh yes, badge check actually wasn't that bad. Like, check in for the actual hotel, badge pickup I guess is the word, mm -hmm. um, was actually pretty quick. Um, it looked very daunting because there was a line and the registration this year was like all way. the way in the back of the room where it's normally in the front of the room. So it looked really busy, but once we got up there, I don't know, maybe it took Five, ten, ten minutes. minutes at most, which is the quickest we've ever gotten our badges at any convention. And we thought Katsukon last year was good where it took like 45 minutes. So Friday morning we got up super early and explored the place. And let me tell you, the whole policy about the Katsukon badges preventing lobby conning this year made a huge difference. Yes. For some reason, it's like a really controversial opinion where you're not allowed to lobby con. Um, but that's a really, really great decision, and I think Katsukon was 100% in the right in doing so. I don't even know why that should be controversial. Like, if you're going to spend all this money to go to an expensive convention with all of this, you know, space, why would you not pay for it? Why would you not want to support the company that's giving you this experience? I don't know, like, right. if you're gonna come at me, come at me, but I stand by pay for your conventions. Right, and I mean, cosplay can be a very expensive hobby. Cosplay is a privilege, not a right, and I guess many people feel entitled to, well, if I'm going there, I should be able to walk around, but that's not how the real world works, and it certainly shouldn't be how a convention works either. It made availability for photo spots a whole lot easier. You know like in years past when if you wanted to take a picture at the gazebo or especially in front of the coveted doors, like you couldn't get anywhere near them because of the sheer volume of people. That was not really the case this year either. On one hand it was kind of irritating to be expected to flash your badge every five feet. Sometimes it was a little smothering, but, but it was with good intentions mm -hmm. and you know just make sure you have your badge out and it's not somewhere that you can't find it readily accessible. Right. Most of the staff was very kind, very pleasant. We had one staff member speak to us very rudely, um, but that was the An one- outlier. Yeah, that was the one exception. Everyone was very positive, very welcoming. So yeah, that's our thoughts on the crowd control and the badge check. I 100% again support Katsukon on making this decision and hope that they enforce this in years to come. Yeah, and I think that's something that maybe other big conventions should do. I mean, I've never gone to Dragon Con or Colossal Con, but cons with that sheer amount of volume should probably look into something like that. And I'm sure everyone, again, is going to come at me in the comments, I'm whatever, um, for your own safety and your own, you know, gratification, having the badge check is something that is necessary for something of that size. Yeah, not only does it make it more enjoyable with fewer people there, Sorry, not sorry. It also makes everybody safer. What did we do on Friday? Or we started off at, in Disney cosplay. Um, we wandered around the floor. We shot a CMV with the fans' point of view, with whom uh, we've worked several times. We're page models for them. And it was just really nice getting to see Ernie again and do some really fun video stuff. We went to the Disney shoot at the gazebo with our three friends, and we met up with so many talented Disney cosplayers and fans. And the Disney shoot is always such a fun time. We were worried initially because that shoot was only half an hour, but Katsukon staff was like, hey, we forgot just how big Disney is, so you guys get a full hour now. Yeah, that was pretty <laughs> nice. So after the Disney shoot, we wandered around as a group. We found our friend Emmy, and we shot a cosplay music video with just Disney characters with her, which was pretty fun. After which, we went back to our room and got ourselves a cheeky Nando's. <laughs> 
After that, we got changed into Sailor Moon for the Many Worlds Cosplay Sailor Moon meetup. What I will say, um, I did like that there was a Katsukon staff member at that shoot, and they had a megaphone. Um, pro tip, there is a button that you press for a megaphone <laughs> in order for it to work. Please speak into Please it. Please speak into it, especially over the din of... 21,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really nice because you could actually hear, and I'm pretty sure nobody really went hoarse this weekend from trying to shout. So Saturday, we got up super early for some private shoots. Then we wandered around, got in some more cosplay music videos. We bumped into the cosplay performance group NYX Rising a whole bunch of times. They're super, super sweet, and we love their work. So just getting to meet them and chat with them was such a, a pleasure. And I'm sure like there are people who think that way about you because these are content creators who are really, really genuinely kind and they love what they're doing. They're not hurting anybody and people come up to them and they tell them how much they enjoy their work. And, you know, I think as fellow cosplayers and performers, mm. just knowing that there are people out there who follow Fairwind and myself and tell us we really enjoy what it is you're doing. Like there's a, a sort of kinship in that. Yeah. And it's really, really nice to see that people are out there doing what they love for themselves. I did Ladybug. Yeah, and you went to the Ladybug shoot, and I went to the huge Marvel shoot on the staircase. Thank goodness that was an official KatsuCon event, because I don't know how many cosplayers were there, but it seemed like half the convention was on that staircase. After our respective fandom shoots, Ladybug and Marvel, we went and got dinner and then changed into X-Men for the X-Men evening shoot. Now, while the Marvel shoot was really, really large, there were maybe only about 30 or 40 X-Men cosplayers, so getting to meet like this kind of niche fandom, even though it's definitely not a niche no. fandom, it was so nice to just be so personal at a smaller fandom shoot at night. It was really sweet and everybody was adorable, especially the really tiny Colossus cosplayer and Shout his dad. Out. <laughs> yeah, it was just really nice. And the staff member there with the megaphone was very helpful in making sure that everything moved along and that everyone got the poses and such that they wanted. So we packed up the car Saturday night and just enjoyed ourselves. We ran into a ton more people. And then Sunday morning, we got up for breakfast with two of our old friends from Massachusetts, our AB friends. We wandered around, went to the dealer's hall and the artist alley with our friends, took some more pictures. And with the exception of our car getting a flat tire in the freezing rain on the way home. On the Jersey Turnpike. In a restricted area of the Jersey Turnpike. What is this about New Jersey? I don't know. We're from New York. We don't like New Jersey. No. Sorry to all the New Jersey <laughs> cosplayers out there. We like your Wawa and we like you. Yes. But we we don't like the state of New Jersey as a whole. But yeah, with that, with that one exception, we really had a terrific weekend. And again, it was just so nice being able to share it with friends who have never experienced the KatsuCon vibe before. For a convention that's considered one of the most elite conventions, pretty much mostly everybody is super, super sweet and accommodating and really nice. Yeah, for a con that's supposed to be really elitist, I mean, I really haven't had that many negative experiences there. I will say, because I'm not really tiny, a lot of professional photographers kind of passed right over some of my more detailed costumes, like Snow White, but that's nothing that's new. That's a you problem. Yeah, that's nothing new in the cosplay community, unfortunately. And another nice thing about it is that we ran into so many people who were fans of our work, and, you know, it's so kind of baffling to be asked, like, hey, are you Pharaoh in cosplay? And I'm just like, yes. I am. <laughs> I mean, I think it's really, really cool, and I'm really proud of you. I watch a lot of Dateline, so part of me is like, what do you, what do you want? Why do you want to know that? But as your sister, I am incredibly proud of you, and it makes me really, really happy to see that people not only follow your work, but really enjoy what it is you do, be it on Instagram, Facebook, Miss the Mermaid, your YouTube channel. You do so much for the cosplay community on a scale that I don't think you've ever really noticed. Aww. And it's not just on Long Island. It is definitely an East Coast presence, and for that I'm extremely proud. Oh, thank you. Oh, I have the best sister. In case anyone is like, are you ever jealous of your sister? No, I can assure you I'm not. There were quite a few times when she was asked, are you really in cosplay? And especially at the Ladybug shoot, where she is very well known for her Ladybug cosplay, especially now in her new and approved upgraded suit and mask combo. Did you have, how many children threw themselves at you this weekend? I had quite a few. <laughs> but it is 
kind of strange. They, they didn't know who I was by name. They just knew I was Ladybug. You know, the girl on TV who saves Paris all the time. So I don't care if they don't know that I'm really in cosplay. I really don't. That doesn't matter to me. But, you know, with a performance background and being a princess, um, being able to talk to them like that character. If they had just said, like, oh, it's a cosplayer dressing as this character that I like, then I would have been like, yeah, I'm a cosplayer. But when you hear, like, oh, hi, Ladybug, and some child throws themselves at you and hugs you really tightly, you can't just be like, yeah, I'm, I'm just cosplaying her. No, you're on. You're, you're on. on. For them, you are the real thing. And that's kind of like a blurry line between cosplay and performance. But, I mean, if a kid loves you that much, you might as well give them you know, your attention undivided and make their dreams come true. We went to KatsuCon to cosplay for ourselves, to mm -hmm. have fun, but we know that when a kid talks to you and is expecting you to answer them, as long as you do it responsibly and you're not going to say anything out of place or rude or inappropriate, then I'd say go for it. So all in all, I think we had a really, really pleasant KatsuCon experience. We usually do. And especially since this year we had our own room and we were the ones who were able to invite our roommates. It was really chill. We picked a great group of people to hang out with. And just the sheer volume of people that we were friends with or we know from, you know, the East Coast, specifically Long Island in New York, just the sheer amount of people that were so friendly and welcoming and warm on our adventures. Our friends were like, guys, you're so popular. It's oh my god, really you're all famous. It's <laughs> really her. So if you came up to us and saw us at KatsuCon, thank you again for all the selfies and the wonderful things. It, your costumes all looked beautiful. We're constantly in awe of the level of talent and craftsmanship that we see at KatsuCon and just the nice people that are there. 100% like it was a great time and we would definitely perhaps consider going again next year Especially since the crowds have been cut down significantly yeah. And if you've never been to KatsuCon and you've been contemplating it because you think that your skill level is Not at the tier that it needs to be. It's really not that snobby or elitist Unless you are a snobby and elitist person. It's mm -hmm. really what you make of it so if you're having fun and you're proud of your costumes and you're happy wearing them, then by all means, bring them to KatsuCon. Well, thanks again for joining us on our recap of KatsuCon. If you like, we have a whole lineup that I can stick in here if you'd like to see them. And uh, stay tuned for our more recent cosplay plans and ideas coming up in the near future. Thanks again for joining me, Aurelian. Well, thanks for having me, Fairwind Cosplay, who I know. <laughs> thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!